helping me with that. Um, Okay, now, now the yeah, opportunity. It, yeah. is, now it's now it's saying it. Yeah. Calling the meeting to order at three thirty nine. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, let's see. I think I'll call. Say who's present. John Fenske. Here, present. Kathy Shane. Here. Holly Bowser. I'm here. Liz Larson. Here. Meg Gage present here. Um, John Page let me know that he has something come up suddenly and is not going to be able to join us. I'm not sure why John, what happened to John McCabe. Um, just hang on here for a second. I've got to get, um, I thought I had this all up, but it disappeared. Um, well, oh, sorry. Get it all up. Okay, anyway, uh, I got it here. Um, on January, uh, March, let me just pull this. Okay, on uh, March 12th. Ah. <laughs> Meg, it's okay if you ad lib it a little bit. I'm going to ad lib it. Um, uh, here it is. Uh, actually, on March 10th, Governor Baker uh, enacted, pursuant with the powers provided in Chapter 639, the following uh, changes to open meeting law as defined in uh, Section 18 of Chapter 30A, uh, to, meaning that hereby the requirements of Section 20 of Chapter 30A that meetings are conducted in a public place are no longer uh, active because of the COVID that people can meet by Zoom. <laughs> I should have just done that from the start, ad-libbed it. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll get that next time. Usually uh, Angela sends it to me and I've gotten spoiled. Um, let's go over, does everybody have the agenda or shall I put it on the screen? I, I think it's helpful if you, for me, it's helpful if you put it on the screen. Okay. Um, I'll put it right here. Okay. So, share screen. It is. Did it share yet? There it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, again, I put my little notes in there in red just to. Um, so we're going to review the agenda. I, I have identified two goals. One is to plan the interviews with the key staff and committee members, including assignments, questions, and materials, and writing the one pager. And the second is to review draft five of the participatory budgeting concepts. Do those goals make sense to people? John, yep, the thumbs up. John is unable to attend. Um, so our agenda, the sort of the pro forma things at the beginning. Uh, these are the topics here related to planning the interviews. I added uh, Liz's intro to this agenda since I emailed it to you that she emailed to all of us this afternoon. It's excellent. And it's pretty straightforward. Comments it seem like the right priorities. Okay. I think I can stop sharing now, don't you think? Because it's pretty straightforward and then we can see each other. Um, thanks to Liz for taking the minutes, appreciate it. Um, let's uh, approve the minutes that John sent. Thank you, John. I just want to, um, again, say how useful it is. This was, ex in my opinion, exactly the right level of detail because uh, it allows us to remember the meeting, especially what was held uh, quite a while ago and we've had a lot of stuff going on since then, um, but not too much mundane detail. It was, I thought they were perfect. Did anybody have any changes to the uh, minutes? 
I particularly note how helpful it is to put the video link so people did want to go back and check something. It's right there at the top. Okay, all in favor, I'm going to vote on approving the minutes. Uh, do we okay, have- I'm just going to- Go ahead, Kathy. Make, okay, I just want to make one comment. Um, for a variety of reasons, I haven't thoroughly read these minutes. So when we vote, I'm going to abstain, but it's not because I have any problem with them, but it's because I haven't read them. Yeah. Well, I did. They're great. <laughs> any other comments? That's helpful, Kathy, so we don't wonder, why did she abstain? <laughs> What's going on with that? All right, uh, I'm going to take a vote. I'll, I think we have to go individually, right, John Fenske? Proof. I in favor. Meg Gage in, in favor. Liz. Yes. Yes. Okay. Holly. Hi. And uh, Kathy. Abstain. Okay. Thank you. Um. Let's jump right into the planning. I should have said at the beginning, I may get a very short, important phone call. Um, and I, if I do, I'll just step away. I hope it just be for less than a minute, something, scheduling something. Um, so, uh, should we start with looking at the questions? Where, where do you think, that's what I had first here. Where do you wanna start with this discussion of uh, our plan for, uh, these different conversations. We have John's uh, questions. We start with that. So I think we said we wanted the questions to be open-ended enough that the, the interviewee could take them where it made the most sense. Does that still sound like a good plan? Well, my my take on that was, I think you wanted to start and end with open-ended questions, but the ones in the middle, inside the sandwich, right. uh, I think could be very specific. They wouldn't necessarily be open-ended. Right. Does that still sound like our plan? So um, I'm suggesting doing these questions first because that might help us think about our one pager. So John, do you want to take us through this? You mean the, the, um, the additional the questions I sent? Yes. Okay, um, let's see. Um, you know, I've, I've said before, I think of these as a bit different from the other questions because the other questions uh, seem to revolve around the, uh, what do I call it? The original, uh, the initial idea about participatory budgeting right. that the Charter Commission threw to, you know, over into our, our court to take care of. And uh, this is, um, so section, uh, what is it, 3B in the draft, uh, along with my small edits, uh, represents an effort to get at this. And now the questions are my ways of thinking about how to see if um, the town manager or the council president or the community participation officers um, respond positively to these things at all. And these things, what are they and how are they different? I mean, I see them as it's mostly about consulting and facilitating. Uh, by consulting, I mean the surveys, the referenda and so forth. And by facilitating, I mean giving, if needed, if useful, some additional tools or handles to uh, the, the residents of Amherst to uh, understand, get into budgeting quicker. I mean, I go to, I've had a lot of experience with at least project budgeting. Uh, and I go to the website and there's just a wealth of material there. And it makes sense, but you really have to get deeply into it. Uh, before you can make sense of it. And that's kind of the situation I'm, I'm concerned about. Um, but anyway, that's, that's my way of introduction. And then in what I've sent you, um, and I, this is really, I wanna hear what the rest of you say and it's, it's you know, ours collectively to edit. Uh, I had some remarks that I thought might set the stage when we talk to people. And then uh, questions about uh, 1A and 1B are about facilitating and 2A and 2B are about consulting. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have to say. Just a reminder, I guess it's obvious, but these are the questions for the town manager, the town, the council president and the CPOs. Right, there could be other people. I, I just haven't thought that carefully. Others have, right. you know, finer grained understandings of the 
community development block grants or whatever they're called and the CPA. I, I just didn't think of these as, as particularly relevant, but you know, people who have been involved in, in town affairs for a while will have ideas about these things and that it, it may make sense to ask it of more people. I didn't mean to limit it to the, you know, the CPOs and the town manager and president. Sure. That's something we may be thinking about as we go through this, especially when you have in mind, if I'm sure everybody got a chance to see the um, assignments, if, although we could change it if you want to, in terms of which group you're uh, going to be part of. So, shall we? Thank you, John. Um, I'm trying to figure out, do people have any comments on this? Should we go through it? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, but could I, can you tell me exactly which document I'm supposed to be looking at? Okay, this is the one that has, it looks like this. <laughs> um, it's John Fenske sent it. Uh, I forwarded it to you yesterday, uh, this morning, actually. Um, he sent it last night, but I was totally, totally Should... preoccupied with the things of the world. Should I share my screen or the- That, that would be, I would love it if you would do great. Because I opened a couple things, I opened a couple and it didn't look right to me. So that's, um, yeah. You might have to, okay. I don't know if you can share it. Do I have to give me? Yeah, no, no, I think I can do no, it. No, he can. He should be able to. Are you good? That do it? Perfect. So now just make it bigger. Ah. Oh. You can make it bigger with um, just by uh, any way you want, but the view can be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That good? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Larger? No, that's good. I can read All it. Right. Thank you. So I would again just to repeat what I was saying, 1A and 1B, I think of as facilitating, and uh, 2A and 2B are consulting. And uh, I think I think of them as fundamentally different from what we're doing in rec with recommendations um, 3A and 3C. So this is in relation to, I'm sure it's obvious to everybody, but um, to our memo, budgeting concepts. So John, are you, are you imagining that we would actually say this at the beginning of the, the, the uh, conversation? Well, you know, we've battered a bunch of things around. And one of the things I've heard frequently is, and I think uh, Liz is the, um, the most uh, frequent proponent of this, is that we have a common set of questions that right. we ask everyone. And I suppose that's good. If we're doing a, a real survey, you want to be, you want to have comparables. You want to right. take the same things to everybody. Um, okay. on, on the other hand, like I say, I initially imagined this, but I need the help from the rest of you, that these are most appropriate for certain people, particularly the town manager, town council president, and the CPOs. Um, I also was thinking as I wrote this that it's, it's quite a bit of material. I mean, you know, you could spend a half an hour, if not, you know, the town manager could probably talk for an hour and a half about these things. Right. Um, so I don't know, we have to choose carefully. And that's, that's right. why it's a group discussion. I, I don't know what to say other than that. This is my starting Great, it's very helpful. My suggestion, oh, Kathy? Okay, and just tell us how you want us to weigh in, Meg. Okay, uh, raise your hand if we're talking about the opening, how to start these conversations. And I, we don't want to overthink it, uh, but Kathy, do you want to speak? And then I will. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Um, I think this opening works really well when we're talking about, as John just said, section B, where we're talking about what do people know? How can we increase general participation? I mean, it's a good flow to that section. Mm -hmm. It works less well for me if we want to see his face go white or, think, <laughs> or, or say, hmm, that's an interesting idea. If we want to say, could we, um, make the resident capital proposers more robust and really set aside a pot of money or um, commit to at least funding a few of them every year. What do you think about that? 
Um, so that to me is is a, an entirely different topic. So mm. I'm going to ask this as a question rather than do we have two sets of interviews with Paul is a unique person here, right? And one is he's in charge of the whole budgeting process and the other he's in charge of the capital scream. And if we want to get a reaction to the idea of, we have a thing on the books called resident capital. Does he think of it? I'm gonna just ad lib here. I don't mean I would ever write these words. Is it a pain in the neck? Um, should we figure out ways to make to really solicit, make it clear that we would like to receive some of these. Um, how might we provide more staff support and helping people price it out if they don't already know how to do it? You know, so I would have the questions be focused more narrowly for what we're calling section A of the outline than I would for B. That's that's my reaction because I think this lead in works on a we have budget forums, we have this, we have that, you know, but if, right. you know, how do people even weigh in if they don't know the basics about budgets? So this is a really good lead in for the other one. So that's my thought. And I don't know how we want to structure the interviews and would Paul be willing to give us two separate hours might be one way of thinking about it. You know, one focused one way, one focused another. I think he might. I think he cares a lot about what we're doing and wants to have an influence on the outcome, possibly in order to not make it too ambitious, but still. So a question about the, well, I guess same question about Lynn, uh, would, would she be willing to give us two hours or is she so busy that she's gonna say, forget it, you get 45 minutes and that's it? I'm, I'm sure she would. Okay, and, and the CPOs, was our idea to, to visit, to interview the three of them separately? Well, I think it should all be at once because they can then cross pollinate and listen to each other and interact. It's also okay. a solution. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, I'm personally, um, you know, I'm I'm not overbooked like Kathy uh, or uh, or Paul or Lynn, but um, you know, I'd, I'd be happy to do two sets of interviews. I think it makes sense. I I wouldn't want to. I wrote this and I felt it was overburdening the kinds of questions that Liz had prepared for us. It would you know to this is shifting gears. It's a very different kind of animal from recommendations three uh, A and three C. And and I think you know for when you asked all together getting this crew, this group of five people in the room for this bigger discussion makes total, makes total sense. I wouldn't do them separately. I'm you know? sorry, this group of five people would- Town manager, town council president, and the three CPOs. Oh, you, yeah. you, think, you think doing, oh, okay. All right, I had thought- All gotcha. together? Is that what you're saying, Kathy? Yeah, that's at least my first reaction. Oh, well, okay, here's, here's my objection to that. Yeah. I think if you go to the town manager and town council presidents separately and the CPOs then in a third group, you're going to get very different answers. Okay. I think the- I take it know, back. I take it back. It, and it just, you know, it just, uh, it, it's efficient, but I'm afraid that we, we lose the diversity of opinions yeah. and yeah. spontaneity and so forth. Particularly the CPOs, you want to give them all the latitude they have. Yeah, have yeah. Without their boss in the room. I mean, you know, you, you folks know them better than I do. I was, Maybe the town manager and the town council president are independent minded enough. It wouldn't matter. We could interview them together. Holly, Holly did you start? I was sort of thinking along those same lines as well, is that the, I think you'd get more honest answers out of CPOs without Paul present. Yeah. Um, I agreed with John spoke the one good thing about having it's just John John is you just have to say John. <laughs> uh, John spoke my what I was one of the things I was going to say. It seems to me that in addition to the one page, we need to have some sort of general opening of what we've been doing. We've been exploring uh, ways of increasing uh, resident participation, and uh, with the pandemic, we've modified our our. Uh, vision and something that's just a little more uh explaining where we're at but 
I, Meg, I thought we were going to do either a one or one and a half pager. Yeah, but I just we need a sentence trans going from the one pager to the, maybe not. I mean, I think when you sit down, I say, thanks so much for making time to meet with us. We're, well, we're you know, a little something of like we're meeting with a number of people, exploring different ideas for how people could. And I guess what I was thinking, if there's a one pager, and you say, this meeting is focused on what we're going to call section 3B or 2B, which is the following. So that kind of lead in that links it back to this other thing we've done. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's not like, hi there, you know, we, we need to. Right. And we, we had, um, I thought we had agreed last time that in a sense, we want to keep a lot of the messy details of, of the draft, of the draft working paper hidden from these people. We want to, we want to present very carefully in, in the lead in paragraph in the uh, introductory material, the one pager, uh, what it is uh, we've been doing and what we'd like to learn from them. Because, right. you know, some of our ideas are, what do I want to say, uh, you know, way out there and, you know, might be a little bit, uh, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to phrase this, but I tried in working on this to, to strike the right tone, give them the right amount of information without committing us to a particular recommendation about facilitation or consultation. Right. Well, we could start out by just saying, did you get a chance to read the one pager? For this, sure. That establishes that that's the- Right, but I, I always assume in situations like this, and I've interviewed lots of people in my life, that you just have to assume they haven't read it. And you have to have a few sentences prepared that let you lead in and set the stage for the questions you're going to ask. That's, all, that's exactly what I was trying to say. We need a little something. Uh, and I, we're probably not gonna read this anyway. So, so just a thought on that as well is when you go to set these meetings up, you're going to give some bit of an introduction then. Like, hi, I'd like to set a time to meet with you about. So you have that also as a bit of a lead in when you when you do the invitations to these meetings. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. That's when the one pager should go out, the one pager for that specific mm -hmm. set of interviews. Right. OK. Any? Uh, more comments on the opening? You mean the optional lead-in remarks? Is that what you're? Optional lead-in remarks or thoughts? So what we've, I've said again, what we've said before is we'll have the one pager. What I hadn't realized till just now is we're gonna have two different one pagers. Well, I thought I thought there were going to be multiple ones depending on the particular audience. We had I thought Liz had started to um, uh, designate in parentheses the target audience for certain questions. Okay, is that right, Liz? Yeah. Liz, in in your in your questions, hadn't you started to designate particular questions for particular audiences? I, yeah, I did. Yeah, they aren't. I, there are many overlaps, but they aren't all the same questions for everyone. Yeah, but I, I think that's right. Okay. Okay. So, um, discuss briefly here one A and one B on facilit. This is on facilitation. Yeah, yeah, this is what, I, right, I call it facilitation or giving tools or handles to, um, to residents, you know, on the assumption that, um, uh, you know, some people are rank beginners or just occasional participants in budgeting questions, and they need quick ways to get at it, but these quick ways ought to be useful, they ought to translate into uh, uh, activity, uh, participation in town deliberations that help the, the deciders, the town council and the town manager. So I would like to add in here, or we could put it in the one pager, but to share very briefly some of the research we've done of the tools that exist in this field, particularly the uh, project management tool that Berkeley's developed and the voting tool that Stanford's developed both of which are free, even well, just give them the link so they can mm -hmm. be aware that we're not necessarily asking people to take on a whole lot of work or do so. Um, hmm. 
you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to think that that's, that's going to help a, the kind of conversation we want to have with the town manager or the president or the CPOs um, only because it would, you'd really get into the weeds to describe what the tool is and how it might help. Um, I think what we want to sell, if anything, if that's the right term, or inquire about is whether they themselves already have the inklings or the, the sense that they could use more information and better information and more detailed information from uh, the, the residents. And, uh, you know, right now, for example, I, I think that the tools are the, present, the annual presentations, the budgetary information on the website and so forth, the, the meetings, the uh, request for public comment. Uh, those are the kinds of handles that are offered to people today. But um, I, well, anyway, that's- Let's hear what some other people think. So I'm not saying we give a big speech about it, but just we, my point, I'll just make a counterpoint to John. I'm interested in what others think, of course, is that this is a field that's fairly well, that's quite well developed. And uh, there are resources that the town could take advantage of, even if it's almost as short as that. But excuse me, just a minor point. Aren't you talking, Meg, really about um, the consulting part, the 2A and 2B, when you talk about these tools that exist? You're talking about surveys and, and getting uh, feedback from people, not about improving the, the ways people can get information. Um, 1A and 1B are about you know, kind of minor tinkering improvements like benchmarks and price tags and... Um, Extremely good point, John. I wish I'd waited till 2B to say that. Okay, any other comments on this 1A and 1B? And if you are about particularly whether we, Kathy? Um, well, I, I think 1B is a little bit long, but I like what it asks. Um, and I'm segueing into 2A and 2B, what John was talking about. I think we need to stay pretty open-ended to see if there is interest at all yeah. um, on getting, opening up a bit more, where 1A and 1B are just making sure that town residents have any idea about where our money goes, where it comes mm -hmm. from, you know, and when if, when if ever they can weigh in on it. Um, and then 2A and 2B, I think, jumps right into some of the really tough decisions we're facing and will be facing forever. But, um, oh, you've got four big building projects and you've mm -hmm. only got this much money. Um, right, how, right. How, how do you know what people's priorities are well before you make a final decision? You know, how do you give people an opportunity um, and that's where, you know, I'm, let me just anchor it into something that is going to happen pretty soon. Um, we at the council have to make a decision about the Jones Library expansion project because there is a grant that we will have to decide to keep or not. We have asked for a lot more information. So the council will have a meeting. How do we know? whether residents have read any of that information, have anything to say when they read, and we've actually asked for information about, accept the grant, here are the cost implications, do repairs, so it's not compared to doing nothing. You know, here is what's involved with that. How will we know that? Um, and that discussion, unfortunately, will probably be anchored in just the library rather than, oh, by the way, next year we have a school decision or this competes with roads or this compete you know name name another big ticket item mm -hmm. 2a and 2b how would we know how people feel um would you want more provide access for more informed discussions so um and I'm not sure I know how to do this, by the way, regardless of what the tools are, because I got emailed by a person who I'm going to have a long discussion with because I know a lot more than she does, but we're just going to talk about it. And I'm thinking, how do you give people enough information so they know what they're talking about before they say, my priority is one, two, three, four? 
Um, right. But I think I think it's premature to ask about tools here because I am not sure there's an interest in opening it up. You know, you know, like we've got district meetings. We, you know, you know, in really getting a big broad survey out, getting a tool out that we, you all come. Right. Right. Um, I mean, I've got, did I have this expression here uh, in which you can be confident about represent, representativeness? I mean, these things are huge, complicated issues. I mean, I, I, you know, let me, let me just give a quick vision of the future and the final recommendation we make. I think we're going to kind of be like the Charter Commission and kick the can down the road on this. I mean, I don't see, I, these things are interesting, I think, in and of themselves, unless Paul and Lynn and uh, the CPOs all shoot it down quickly. I think they're interesting, but I really think it requires a lot of detailed work to get this right. Um, and that's, that's, what, that's the sense out of which I say, Meg, I, I think that introducing one of these tools that other places have developed is not the right, I think you need the general concept to see whether there's interest in, in that, in, in, in getting people's, um, uh, getting a high confidence, um, survey or, or response from the community about ranking big projects or something like that. But, but how I, you do it, I have no clue at this point. Yeah, my, I'm not saying we should try to advocate that we adopt tools, just that there's, we're not making this stuff up. This is, there's a big field, a big of people who are working on increasing participation and budgeting in all sorts of ways. And that there are some resources, should the town ever wanna go, it might even in that direction might even be something we put in the one pager. Um, I did, well, I, I, I guess I still think it's premature. And when I look at those tools, they are not geared for these super big thorny issues in quite the way. I think it's an easier when you're drilling down on some small, you know, tangible kinds of things rather than you have to write a lot about each of them before you feel yeah, I just. Uh, well, I agree with you. The, yeah. the project, the project, uh, uh, the tool for helping groups create project development could be something that the CPA makes available for community groups who want to do something, right? So they're not just on their own. Yeah. For example, so I'm not. I agree that um, Paul and Lynn probably aren't going to care about the voting tools because they. You know, it's it's there's it's problematic if you're dealing with the kind of thorny issues you you've just described. Yeah, so I, I just I would love it if we came out of this with a sense that there is real interest in trying to do this better. There's an open or there's not, you know, that they're already they think they push the envelope about there's this new bang the table. I have no idea what that tool really is, you know, trying to find clever ways of people weighing in. So uh, uh, taking copious notes as we open up these issues and hearing what they, what each person has to say, I think um, would be well worth our while. Mm -hmm. uh, right. what's, it, what's at stake here in my 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B is just trying to get, um, you know, useful information from these people about what path we should chart. And again, I don't think we're going to solve any of this. I think we'll probably hand off what we've done to a successor participatory budgeting commission, because it takes a lot of detailed work to get this stuff right. Yep. Any other comments? Especially on 2A and 2B? So am, am I to understand that uh, people agree that it's worth setting up um, a second interview with at least with uh, Paul and separately with Lynn and the separately with the C three CPOs to address just this set of questions? Is that what I'm hearing? Which set? This whole thing? This set. Yeah, this set, the, you know, my, my, questions concerning the recommendations in section 3b i mean this means nothing to them but that's what the sense of the lead-in remarks is about right. to set the stage when 
you know, something like that needs to be said to set the stage. Right. And, and presumably it's it or something similar is in the one pager that we sent to them for this second interview. Kathy? Um, I'd like, I like this set. So what I was thinking, and rather than answering your question right now, John, which I think is the right question, is let's go through the other sets with okay. a, a judgment on how much time will we be asking of people if we look at mm -hmm. uh, the, the, some of the things that I think are more focused on spent carving out some money yes. in some way. Um, and I would do this set second, but also when we look at Liz's, the other set, what I'm thinking is like when we have Paul in the room, we, my, my imagination of the one page summary is something like we're the PB commission, blah, blah, blah. We have, we're not talking about doing it exactly the way other communities have done it. We have three different ideas we're working on. One is you know, using, building on some places we have now and making them more robust. Two is da da da. Three is broader participation. Right, right. now, we're, right now we're here focusing on one. You know, that's what we're focusing today. And the same could be the same lead in them with the CPA people. Right now we're just focusing on one with you with CPA where you already can get resident proposals. And we're gonna, we're not gonna go to, they get the same three part thing. We're just here to talk to you about this. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can look at the whole set, and we think is that first interview with Paul, um, Paul plus Sean or something, mainly focused on the resident capital proposals. Do we wanna talk also about CPA because CPA would need some staff support to, to make it easier for residents to apply. Um, so just, I'd need to get the whole thing on how can we schedule these interviews and have them all done by the end of February, for example, um, or our target dates. Because mm -hmm. I'd be willing, let me just give you my um, bottom line. You know, if we found some things are so murky for people and there's a kind of resistance, we could write a shorter report and just have each sec some sections be really short on other ideas that we haven't fully mm -hmm. developed <laughs> that we think need to be developed in the future. Um, so we'd get some idea of shortening and how to focus the final report that comes out of here. Um, mm -hmm. So I just need to see the whole set because I think focusing on this makes sense to me and I would do it toward after we've done the others. So we don't shut off the conversation for the others before we do this. Go. That's, that's just my sense. <laughs> Other comments on this? So is there more to say on the 2A and 2B? I'm still a little, so we're talking about two separate meetings with both Paul and Lynn. Uh, for some reason, I didn't have on my doodle poll a meeting with Lynn, so we'll have to create that. But that's I, don't think, I don't think I'd include Lynn in the other meetings. I think this is the only one I'd include, you know, this focus that John has. Right, but I'm saying she, I didn't do it, include that in the doodle poll. It didn't, oh, okay. it didn't okay. brainstorm, so we'll, that's no big deal to Added. Oh, I see what you mean, that you didn't have Lynn on the list as a separate anything. Yeah. So okay. Lynn, just say what you said, though. Lynn is, would be, which, I just got confused by what you just said, Kathy. Lynn would be. I think John's set of questions that I just saw and focused right. on now are good questions for Lynn. I don't, oh. I don't think the questions on resident capital requests, CPA, staffing, I don't, you know, we need, right. we need the. Paul and the people who control those right now Got to it. to be open to those. So I wouldn't focus on those with Lynn alone in the room. But are you saying both these sets for Lynn? One yeah. A, B? Yeah, the, the entire set of Johns, the entire set of Johns. You know, because for Lynn, as the council president, if we had better ways of doing some of this, or we had some ways of doing some of this, um, when we're doing public forums, we might, figure out ways of getting more of the public talking because 
you know, it's it's part of what the council do, is supposed to be doing, and so it directly plays in to the council. Yeah, I have a feeling if we're just talking to Lynn, we could do both of these A and one and two. Well, oh, I was I was thinking A one and two go to Paul, go to Lynn, go to the CPOs. I wasn't going to separate them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I like. 1A, one 1A, one 1B, one 1, 2, and I, I think it's a nice set of, I think of it as four questions. I, I Maybe I misunderstood. I always thought there of- was, There was some talk of two meetings with Paul and two meetings. The separate meeting with Paul is on resident capital requests. Oh, CPA, okay. I mean, JCPC for Paul, yes, yeah. because- That's the other, it's a completely different focus on how do you get participation more broadly. It's- Got it, know, got it, got it, got it, okay. So that is two meetings, got it. Okay, great, times two. Right, you already have Paul down yeah. technically for the two meetings. You have the town manager meeting and then you have the resident capital request joint capital planning committee, which would be Paul and Sean probably. Yes. And then one with just Paul as town manager, not focusing on resident capital, but focusing more on just budget and information in general, yeah. right? Okay. I see Kathy shaking her head. No, that, that's that's what I thought we were doing exactly right. when, when when we set up what those why Paul was always on twice even though it said resident capital request. That to me is Paul. That's Paul, right? Yes. Okay, good. So I think that's just the confusion. So, uh, any more on this on what John prepared? Lynn, or you have to, Liz? Do you anything you want to add? Shall we go to Liz's? Okay, we're gonna move now to, this is, uh, <clears throat> you sent this piece. Shall I uh, share it? We'll share it. It's, it, I just have to say, it's really helpful for me when you share it because I don't print them out. Yeah. And and I bought a separate monitor, but I haven't hitched it up yet to figure out how to have one screen showing something and the other screen. I, I know that's a good thing to do. I just haven't mastered that skill yet. That's um, why I keep doing this today is I finally got my second monitor. <laughs> great. All right. There we go. Thank you, Liz. Do you want to say anything, Liz? Um, I haven't read this in a month, so. I thought it was uh, excellent introduction. Sort of like this, the beginning of our one pager. Well, this was uh, basically a cut and paste and I sent out the original draft and after feedbacks, everybody said cut it, so I cut it. Yeah, right. You know, and the, the only thing I might, I like this a lot, I like the, the only thing I might do on A is uh, put a colon and do our list. Um, resident capital quest, uh, yeah. uh, community participation act. And um, if I say, I, I always seem to get it wrong, but the CDBG, you know, the CDBG, you know just, you know, build on enhance to propose projects annually in the following three areas that we've identified or something, you know, I would just put that right in A um, and then B and C, I think look perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. Can you tell me what the three areas are after the colon and A? Um, okay, so A, I would go build on and enhance to propose projects annually. And I would add the words in existing programs and colon. And it would be resident capital requests, semicolon, community participation act, project proposals. Community colon. preservation Wait, act. CPA. CPA, yeah. yep. CPA and uh, community development black grant. Okay. Great. And so I think that turns it into a, either a two or three sentence, but not very long. I mean, it's still pretty, it's nice and tight. Yeah. All right, I will edit that and get it back out. Great. 
So, um, is this going to be the the one pager? It's half great. It's it's a half a page. I really like it. <laughs> uh, I wonder. It seems like we have so much more that we've said about building on. I think it's great too. Of half a page. What the heck? But can we? Um, I might want to add. I don't want to make it longer because we wanted to make it shorter. But um, I might. Could we all? I'm going to uh, offer a slight edit, which I haven't done yet. But um, I'm not sure I am. But um, let's agree that anybody who wants to add any further edits should do it within the next week, right? So, so let me just say how I think this might work, but I, I, I'm agreeing with you at, if someone has edits, but if this is the lead on, mm -hmm. then what you were worried about, what you were saying we need to do a lead in, we're here to talk to you about. That's what, right. And so, so um, when we're with Paul, we're here to talk to you about resident capital requests um, because they were put on the books in X, Y, and Z, and they don't get a lot of participation exactly. and right. there's not staff support. So you can put four more sentences. We're here to you. Here are our questions. We're here to talk to you about the um, Preservation Act. Um, uh, only sometimes residents can propose, but it doesn't very often happen. There's not a lot of support currently on how to do it. Here are our questions, you right. know, and then we're here to talk to you about. So the next thing can be the lead in that you wanted to question set number one, question set number two, question set number three. Yeah. And, then, and then the John ones, we're here to talk to you about uh, more effective ways to solicit public priorities. Um, yeah. And that's the lead in sentence then. So here's our big picture, half a page, and then our question set follows. Right. Good. And what I did just then, I did it really quickly, but I've been thinking, you know, in that lead in sentence for resident capital requests or the CPAC thing, we'd put just enough that people can do it. We realize that they can, they're in CPAC, it's within these three priorities, but currently there's not a lot of help to figure out how to do a proposal or cost it out. Um, and you don't often get them, you know, right. you know, and something that said two more sentences like with resident capital requests. Uh -huh. um, similarly, you know, it's on the books, but it doesn't, it doesn't get used very often and uh, people have to do guesstimates. Um, so we're here, so I, we could flush them out just enough to not have it be too long and not have it be too judgmental. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would be concerned. I wouldn't want to ask or do anything that might be leading. Right, so that, I, that's what I was saying. I, I'm not wording quite right. I just want to go, you know, <laughs> you know these, are, these are on the books. We want to talk to you about um, these sentences you've already got. Liz, build on and enhance, you know, how, how one we might build on and enhance. So I, I said too much on each of these because your questions got out at them. But that's why I think rather than making this longer, that next, the segue into the questions could say just a little bit more. Yeah. Good. Um, so this is, this is a piece of work if we're going to write different want versions of this for different Oh, I wasn't saying that. I would leave exactly this. And then the question set has the lead in sentence. That's what I would, structurally, I was just saying there's a question set for the people we're talking to that's attached to this half pager. I wouldn't re rework this at all. But that was my... And the questions are what John did. John did questions for, for, for B. B. For, for B. B. Right. Okay, good. I mean, that's, I have this structural thing like the, you know, in my head that this is a beautiful half a page that say here, we're here to talk to you about this. Here are our questions. Mm -hmm. you know. So Liz, is this something you can take on or should one of the others of us do that? Um, okay, I, can you clarify what I'm not yeah, this I'm, that I should take on is? I'm sorry, I'm not, I thought, I, I was thinking of offering to take it on myself, but I'm, I'm not, I'm afraid I'm 
would ask, I need a little bit more talking through what Kathy you're thinking of, and I don't really want to take everybody's time. Well, well I think I think I do understand what Kathy is saying. Um, and so I guess what I can do is I can put together here is the sample packet as I as I'm understanding that our intention is to send it to the people we're interviewing. So here is the sample packet that would be sent ahead of time to them. Um, and I can send those around and that way we can be sure that we're all on the same page. Great, John, what were you gonna, you had your hand up? No, that's, that's pretty close. I, I think this is perfect the way it is. And it's just that the questions underneath are different and there may be some, um, you know, verbal some a few things we say when we sit down when we get on zoom uh, that um, you know clarify where the questions are going good thank you liz for the doing the draft and then we can uh, comment on that so it seems like we're getting pretty ready to start scheduling these so are the question have we we already agreed on the set of questions for each of those other interviews? Yeah, could we put those up on the screen, the, the questions that as they ended up edited? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying if I could get a quick look at them, because I'm I think I'm I think we're very far along and Liz can I trust Liz to put together the packet. Um, but I just want to see what they look like. Um, is that from our last meeting? I'm gonna stop sharing. It, it is. If you can can you let me share? I've got it right here. Okay, yeah. go for it. Uh, Great, I have it, but I think we can all share at this point. Yeah, it, it just means someone has to unshare, there. which is what you did. I just did, yep. Perfect. Ah, good. Hey, can you see them or do I need to zoom them? Get them up uh, maybe 150%. Bigger would be great, yeah. We don't have to sit so close with her. Uh, oh, I Bigger? see. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, so this is where, so I can, if you remember Liz's great cover, which now says on A, um, colon, you know, we're here three, particularly these three programs, colon A, B, C, um, it would just have a lead in, it says town official staff, it has a leading. We're here to talk to you about the resident capital requests. <laughs> and then, in your opinion, what works well and does, you know, so it would have that lead in if it's that we're here talking to the resident crowd, we're here to talk about the, the Community Preservation Act. We're here to call, talk to you about the CDBG, you know, so it would, that's all I'm thinking, you know, something simple that has the page one that's a half a page. And then, you know, when you think about resident capital work requests, what works and what doesn't work. <laughs> um, how, how do you, these work pretty well for me. How do you, what's the process now for ranking and assessing? You know, what's the current, I'm, I'm reading down them thinking, okay, first it's resident capital requests. I don't really, um, what's, I don't know what the process is, Holly, right now when you, we don't get that many resident capital requests, but some of us take a quick look at it you know, I know Guilford will say you can't do a sidewalk for that amount of money or something. <laughs> you know, there must be some input, but somewhere along the line. Um, yeah, with capital requests, I'm not really sure. I haven't been yeah. that involved in that the last couple of years. No, but I know there's some. So I think this work. I'm just going through what is the current input um, from town staff or departments because if you're over in Community Preservation Act, it gets. They'll describe that if it's historical, it gets head, sent over to the historic commission, and if it doesn't fit, they throw it out. If it's they don't feel like you've described it costs, you know. So I think to me these kind of work right now. If I'm running it through the lens of each of those, um, so there's a after that one, two, three bullet. Liz, um, where it says, what is the current input from town staff or departments required to assess power question mark? I would make the next its own bullet. Could town staff be made available to assist? You know, just, it's a separate thought to me. So it's just a, it's a bullet rather than part of the first. Yeah, just like that. 
And then is that other bullet that's indented is just should be in. No, I think that no, it's related to town staff. If okay, the town staff is available, what would their yeah. Yeah, so I'll just that goes up there. Perfect. No, I think this I think this works well to get a conversation started and um, it will be the working script and it may be in some the whole conversation focuses on the first four or five of these. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if they is there any flexibility to commit met how would you do, you know, why or why not? <laughs> you know, so we might get only halfway through some of these because it becomes a longer conversation, mm -hmm. which would be good, right? I mean, it wouldn't, it would be great. Good. So for the CPOs, let me just ask, it's completely clear to me for this set of questions for whoever we're talking to for CPAC, for CDBG, for the resident capital requests, JCPC. Then with CPOs, they're big picture people. They're the people who, um, it, feel, it feels like a different set of questions because I'm not sure I would ask them anything on this list um, specifically. No, I agree. I think it's a separate. And I think that goes back to John's questions. Those ones are more for the higher level for town manager, town council, CPO. Because yeah. those are more of the bigger picture. And maybe, and maybe in this set, um, depending on who we're talking to, could the could the CPOs be helpful in getting the word out, you know, about the, the open period is open, the whatever period is open, but the CPOs can only do what they're asked to, to do. Um, Although they, they've had a lot of experience getting thrown participation tasks. And I think that that very last bullet, best of all possible last, world's yeah. question, that's exactly. appropriate to them. That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> right. And I think that the open periods of proposals, is, is that something that they could help and facilitate and align and um, can open periods of proposals be aligned across budgets and committees. I think that that would be something that CPOs would maybe have some thought or input into as well. So those two kind of are the ones that stick out to me that CPOs would be. So in, our, ideas. so in our CPO packet, those two might go into that packet in addition to the broader participation things, right? I mean, there's, and that would lead in would have to say something like we have these resident capital proposals, we have the this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. Um, could you be helpful during the open periods? Could you be more helpful in getting the word out or, or something, you know, letting people know? Um, but I think the first up until those, it doesn't seem like there's something to interview them about, but the open period definitely. And the last one, best of all possible world. Um, well, that's good one. Maybe we could combine um, the questions in, um, I had the 2A and 2B, I mean 1A, the, the things on, on uh, devising better ways of soliciting citizen priorities, maybe we could combine that with everything we want from this list that we'd like to ask the CPOs. Seems to be there's only a couple of bullets here. That we yep. Have. Yep. Yeah, yep, yeah. So I, so I just was gonna remove them from the big list here, but Holly pointed out two of these really work well for them. So move it on so. to the other interview list. Thanks. So, um, <clears throat> Are we ready to move on to talk about our timeline for doing these, how we're gonna report back and the teams for doing the interviews? I think so, if Liz is clear enough on what we just did quickly. I think I'm okay. Okay. So let, let me understand the, so the idea is that uh, Liz is now going to take a first cut at generating the various so-called one pagers that are gonna go out with the uh, interview uh, scheduling and then, but then we'll come back and we'll do one last crack together at saying, yeah, this all works for me, this works for me. Is that the idea that? Oh, well, I'm gonna do what, what I 
think I believe I have agreed to do is I will do the one page cover that and then the specific questions um, like what I've is on the screen right now that will be um, edited and targeted to the different um, the town official staff and committees. So not anything above academic stakeholders. So that will be the packet that would be going out initially once we set up the meetings. I don't know, depending on what the next part of the conversation is with our timing. Um, I don't know how that has another crack at it, but I think maybe the tweaking of questions is better done between the people who are going to be doing the interviews and agreeing to do that rather than coming okay. back to the committee as a whole. I think that's a good idea. Shall I stop? Yeah. Can I stop sharing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, what you just described, Liz, made total sense to me. Did it make sense to everybody else? Yes. Great. So um, I want to get a sense of maybe we don't need to do this now, depending on what our timeline is going to be, of uh, the format back to others on the commission. Thoughts on that? Um, I, did, I didn't hear what you said, Meg, what you said, something about format, what, what? How, how we want, are there, do we want to say a few words about how the different groups, the small groups doing these interviews will report back? So I, excuse me, I just have a process question. Are we going to get booted like we were last time in no, five, ten minutes? I got that double checked. That was ridiculous, that was unfortunate. But it still, it would be great to end at five-ish because that's what we've said we're going to do. So we've got 20 minutes. So but so the three the things left to talk about of is how whether and maybe we can put off reporting until our next meeting, depending on we want to also talk about what our timing is. Remind me when the next meeting is. Well, I think it's in two weeks. That's what's on our agenda to discuss. I think we've agreed to the next meeting is uh, January 21st. And then we have February, I'm hoping. February 4th, February 18th, March 4th, and March 18th. Okay, do me a big favor and mail that out to us also. Um, it's at the end of the agenda, but I'll mail it again. No, no, just a separate. We, separate. The, we, yep. so, so here's, in response to your thing, I think what I'd like as a report back is you go in with these questions. Uh, there's always going to be at least two people coming from our group, right? And we've pre-decided that someone will bring, will have their laptop or something open to type mm -hmm. and or uh, record. Um, and so as much as possible, it's a report back on the responses to the actual questions and then a summary up at top of a sense of, there was a lot of interest in this. Um, not sure there's much interest in this, you know, sort of a concluding kind of uh, feedback to us. Um, but I'd like as much as possible that the people doing the interview are the eyes and the ears of the rest of us so I can hear what was said in the other meetings without having to be there. <laughs> right. So that sounds good to me. Let me just summarize what I think I heard. Someone in the pair or trio doing the interviews We'll be taking notes after the meeting they'll summarize the kind of major bullet points at the top of how you know what was concluded and that will be circulated uh, i think it should also be we should expect that we'll give verbal reports as well because that's often how you communicate some of the nuance and my example if i were the scribe um i would take liz's question set the word version of it and have it open on my computer with a lot of space underneath each question. So I can just quickly type in <laughs> what happened there, you know, rather than having to reproduce the question. Um, right. My famous example of not doing this well was my son was doing a project on penguins and he found a world expert on penguins and he sent him off question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The guy mailed him back and said, answer to one is yes, answer to two is not sure. <laughs> And he couldn't find the questions he'd asked, so he didn't know what the answers meant. <laughs> so the putting the answer right under the question, it was something I wished we'd say, could you just fill this, you know, handwriting in the answer? It was like, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> it was I have a very practical question, which is um, who is actually 
making the appointments and sending the one pager. Okay, let's do that next. Okay. Um, and we, for that, we can turn to the committees. Uh, I, I think it should be someone who's on the group. So I pull that up, that document. Um, yes, please. Okay, okie dokie. Let's see here. Um, Open. There we go back to this. There. Okay. Um, I have uh, two or three people on each one. Um, I have a situation that may take me out of commission for a week or so, so I put myself as a third person. But now that we're adding down here, a council president. I'm sure I won't be, I'll have some knowledge, but of whether I'm, when I'm gonna be out. Uh, I, first of all, do we want to, uh, it seemed like everyone should be on two. Um, we had six people and five slots, but now we have six slots because we're adding the president. So we could have two people on each one. Does that make so, sense? So, uh, Meg, if I could be dropped from the CDBG, uh, I'll be happy to do the council president. Okay. That way Good. I get I get all the ones that are relevant to the questions I've worked on. Good. Excellent. Uh, and I, I, don't, I, I don't mind being on three. Um, you've got me on the thir third one with a paren. I really want to hear the response on resident capital requests. Um, so that's my highest level preference. Okay. We didn't, yeah, the, the doodle poll didn't have highest preference. Of, okay. right, so, wait, so am I only on two right now? Uh, you're on uh, two. Okay. I. Oh, no, you're on three. Town manager. This is the this is the town manager more general. I don't need to be on that one. I really want to be on... CPAC and resident capital. Okay, <laughs> then you are. Good. Yeah, so I was just saying my prep because I, I think those process those are opportunities that we really, I feel like we can build on them. Whether there's a willingness to build on them or not, I don't know. Yeah, and okay. I just. Yeah. Okay, I think I think you've touched on an important point. Don't we need to identify for each of these whether there is one or two interview sessions? So for example, the, the council president, um, I think it's only one, it's, it's on the questions I had. Whereas others are going to have, the CPOs are gonna have, no, they get only one, the CPOs. Right. right? Well, and, and what we don't have is what Holly said, um, resident capital requests, who are we talking to? We're talking to Paul and uh, sh probably Sean. You know, those would be the two. CPAC, I think we're talking to the current chair and to Anthony, maybe. Would that be the right other person? Or Ben. 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 Oh, Ben. Right, right. Maybe, maybe it's Sarah and Ben, because Ben is the person who's trying to figure out how to um, get more um, proposals right. coming to them. And then, but I would say also Anthony, because Anthony kind of knows how how the current application process the budget you know if, yeah good but that's that's uh, cpos yeah, not CPAC. Up to the top i'm sorry <laughs> good right wrong place yep okay so it's sarah marshall uh yep i just put initials and it's not his name isn't not ben, ben. What, i was confused his name is sam Oh, Sam. I was like, I, was, I, I was think just of thinking of a Ben. Ben. <laughs> I'm just thinking Ben is on the school committee. Who, which Ben? It's Sam. I'm thinking of a guy. Sam who, McLeod, yeah. Sam McLeod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anthony, okay. The person I was thinking of was um, a different, uh, it is somebody named Ben, but it's obviously not the right person. Okay, so I just wanted to put that. So it's Paul is on twice here is the point I was making. No yeah. one else is on more than once um, in terms of the amount of time we're asking for. Okay, so um, 
other we need one more person to do the council president and i could take myself off of one of these the resident capital requests and join john liz are you happy with your assignments um the thing lynn i'm on her campaign team so i don't think it's appropriate that i do that <laughs> so okay. i'm just wondering about asking i interrupted my i'll i'll jump on unless somebody else wants to do the council president i can jump on that and take myself off of something else like um this says kathy and john you don't need me there okay uh and if someone else want to meet with the town manager no you know so the three johns are each of the three johns on two yes john? okay john p there john without an h uh wait a i got yeah no, that, I, 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 i'm just scanning it i think i think this looks pretty good um okay, good. So, so shall we have each of these teams just to save time uh, agree on who's going to once when we don't have the one pagers quite yet who's going to send the email and make the request so start at the top is okay. what's, the first, what's the first one well i'm just wondering do we want to just agree that we'll just do that among ourselves after the yeah. meeting yeah yeah absolutely absolutely okay. after the meeting we'll all the pairs will and i'll send you this updated version when I send you the schedule of the meetings. Good. Uh, okay. No, actually, can we, since there's only six, is it possible to just do it now so that we're not kicking this can down the road and someone forgets? Okay. Uh, John Fenske, do you want me or you to contact the town manager? Um, I, I can do for the three meetings, uh, you know, if doing three is not that much harder than doing one. I'll be happy to do all three. You know, we'll consult a, ahead of time on the material, the one pager, and then, um, and and. Uh, but somebody give me a tip. Do time I just frame. get in touch with uh, the? Uh, I guess his uh, one of his assistants and for, if, him, if, for if, the if call. You, if you email Paul, um, Angela always gets it. Also, so you can email him directly. What about uh, Lynn? She's uh, Lynn, Lynn is Lynn. Lynn is the only way to get to Lynn is Lynn. Yeah. So email directly to the. Yep. I have. I'm sure you have their emails, but if you don't. Um... Okay. And then the community participation officers. I I just need to know their all three names. I think I've met them I, all I, serially. I, I, I think. I think there is Holly. Am I right that there's a way of doing CPO and you get all three of them? I yeah. believe there is. Yep. Oh, and then, okay. that would be great. And it's and then you can then get the three names and say hello, Brianna and 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 and, Jen and um, Angela. I'm, yep. Okay, and I see that uh, Meg uh, actually, you're on this the three. Uh, yeah, you're on the same three oh. interview assignments, and Liz is just on one of them for the CPOs. So I can, I'll copy, Liz, I'll do all three, I'll copy Liz on it and she can just ignore the other two that she's not involved in. Okay, I didn't totally follow that, but. That was for the uh, consultation before setting in, you know, the materials they could send out. The, so I'm, I'm gonna volunteer for, for the two I'm on, um, in part because I've got a, a tightish schedule and um, so, CPAC and resident capital request. Um, and I'm going to be, I have to talk with Paul and Sean anyway because I'm chair of JCPC. Um, so it, right. would, it would be, so I will do JCPC and the CPAC. Good. And I'm liaison to CPAC. Just, it just oh, makes great. sense for me to do okay. that. Um, Community development block grants. A John or neither of the Johns are here. So you'll just tell one of them has I'll to take, take care of that. Yep. Okay. So when do we want to do these? I'm trying to, I wish I'd pulled up my, uh, our timeline, which. Well, for, for my two, um, my thought would be we're just starting J the new JCPC. It's a uh, Intensity for budget stuff. The intensity of the budget is uh, March and April. Yeah. So um, CPAC. So I would try to do these as soon as possible. As soon as I got the script, 
um, because CPAC has already done all the projects for the year. And now, you know, they're going to have to do another presentation. They don't have another year opening up for a while. So it's a little bit of a lull period for them. Um, and so grabbing, allowing the three people time to say um, what slot. And are we asking for like an hour? Yeah, well, or 45 minutes. So I would try to get these all set up pretty soon. <laughs> and... When, you know, uh, Holly's probably laughing at the thought that Sean or Paul aren't working madly every minute from now until May. Um, well, I know, yeah, well, I'm not quite that, but I was thinking about me every minute from now until March or April. No, <laughs> but, but, I, but I think we're in we're in intense budget season right now, where the departments are sending oh, yeah. up their ideas. So JC, for before mid so would we? I'm to, sorry. I guess my question would be: would, Do we need to wait till the next meeting? to do this or are we going to be thinking about doing it before the next meeting? So if the next meeting is January 21st and we should be good to go immediately after that. So say the first week in February. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's probably the second week in February and then we'll have it for the meeting after that, hopefully. Yeah. No, I think that, that sounds good to me because we'll have Liz's packets then. So if there's any fine tuning or as long as they come in word, we can, you know, modify them slightly if, yeah. if I guess we don't want to schedule them before we have the packet, right? Because we want right. to send the packet. But it's another way of doing it would be to schedule it and say we'll be sending you a packet, which we would send immediately after the uh, January twenty. If we wanted to start, so you could do the last week in January. Yeah. To say we'd like to meet with you sometime after uh, January twenty first before the middle of February. I think it's helpful to have the packet right when we ask for the meeting. I mean, exactly. I just think so because people, busy people want to know what they're putting on their calendar. Um, right. Yes, but we also have to know that the packet will need to be sent again before the meeting. Yes. Yeah, no, so it'll be sent twice. It'll be sent, <laughs> it'll be sent when we schedule before. it and then we'll be sending a heads up we're due to meet tomorrow or whatever, yeah. <laughs> question about terminology you you folks are saying packet are we talking about more than a one pager no i i actually think it's i think it's evolved to be one page that's a half a page and one page of questions unless liz can unless it all fits somewhere so it's it's two pages it could be one two one two-sided page but okay, it's right we're talking about the half page intro plus whatever questions are appropriate got it yeah right. okay. okay thank you okay we're doing awesome um, what we didn't get to yet is, and we won't, again, we haven't gotten to it for a while, is any more discussion about the uh, participatory budgeting concepts, which has had some edits since we've discussed it last, the edits that we haven't discussed, but I've suggested at this point in our meeting that we put that off. Well, in <laughs> fact, I would just add, I'm a great fan of whoever said that, hey, after these interviews, we're going to have a lot of different ideas right. about it about this draft. Yeah, I, I would let it set fallow, you know, not lost. Um, and now, um, because anything, the edits now just wouldn't make sense because we should be redoing this when we're going yeah. toward more what we think is a, a, a quasi final budget document right. that we're willing to have a larger audience see. Well, and we, we may delete, change wording, um, and we already left open that we want to report out on these initial feedback we got, you know. Um, sharing here. Right. So uh, that's think, obviously, think, that's a great idea. I just had it on my mind that we haven't looked. So thanks to Liz and John for adding some more edits. They're excellent. And I added some too. So let's put it fallow, but not forgotten was a good <laughs> concept. <laughs> um, I uh i'm gonna does anybody have anything they want to say before we acknowledge that there's nobody here for public comment um the one thing i would just say for my um um holly can do this or maybe angela's helping if that last double set of edits and stuff if you can place it in save it on the website i um, i'm i don't always know which when someone is sending something with an attachment 
Um, so if you made some changes, Meg, and if Liz made some changes and John Penske made some changes, I don't know whether I'm looking at a document with all of those changes in it, which is not a problem for me. I just need them labeled right. John Frensky edit, Meg edit, Liz edit, so that I know I've got three documents that do something compared to the last time it was in my computer. And I can then, if I just get them labeled, um, and, and I don't, you know, it's it can't be like draft five because it's, or draft six, because each person who edits it, it's a changing draft, you know, so I just whatever we can do to keep the record straight would be really helpful to me because I don't know what whether I should be opening three documents right now, which I don't mind doing. I, I just think they're all, I think that they're all being added together into the one document, aren't they? Well, they mine was sent out separately. I don't know. Yeah, see, that's what I think. John's was separate from Liz's, and I had no idea you made changes, Meg. So I don't know which document you were on. No, I've just the things you added about the tools and of uh, so you clump, you glomped in what I put sent you. So, so the stuff you sent was already in the yeah. doc that John worked on yeah. and then Liz yeah. worked on. Oh, so saying, what I was saying was something we're going to make it fallow but not forgotten. Yeah, and we'll note that since the last time we actually discussed it at least three of us have made comments, but there's no reason to discuss them now because we'll have plenty of opportunity. Well, except that, you know, beware version confusion. Yeah. I think we need one common document and you use the various track changes options to see for yourself what's a final draft, what's comments right. only and so forth. We just have multiple copies now and I'm-, I'm that, a That's concerned. that's what I was raising. And, you know, if someone points me to, if it's just a Fensky, Add, which I knew, I just said, do it, John. And if Liz's were already in that, but um, you could, we can color code them too. So not just the comments that, you know, one's yellow, one's pink, one's blue. And then when we come back to it, we can see that it's something that's been added. So I'd like to look at just one version if we can. So it, my request was only, I don't know how many we've got out there right now. If it's only one, that's great. Um, Is there any way, I don't know with open meeting law, any way to have it on say Google Drive or we're not, we're something not more like that. We're not technically allowed to work on Google Drive is what we were told because the changes don't get tracked in the same way. So- Well, what about OneNote or one of something, some document sharing web browser based something? Um, you know, I will check but I think you can, because you're not technically deliberating unless you're, you, there's nothing. We're not voting on it. Well, it's, it's, it is the dropping in new things and identifying as that I think is fine. And then we can come back together, replacing something that was written before. You know, it's this, it's weird, right? You know, so you, um, so I'll give you one example of what Lynn did, which I thought was the most painful thing I'd ever seen, but she got comments from a whole bunch of people and she put them all in. So she put, you know, someone said, delete this. Someone said, someone said, expand this. And then so we painful, you know, we went through something and it, she just copied and pasted each thing into where to avoid. But so Holly can check. I would love it. What you just said, Liz, if we could just look at a Google Docs and do its Google Doc one, you know, its version, whatever, and keep watching it as it morphs. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think using something like um, the Microsoft uh, cloud-based thing, um, you can do one so that only one person has editing ability. So that would be you, Kathy, uh, but then other people can add comments to it. And that way you would still retain control to it, but everybody would be able to see the comments. So we're not all making the same comments or all correcting the same spelling. <laughs> okay, so let me, I, would, I, I will double check that, you know, because that would be perfect. You know, you're dropping in comment bubbles, which can be, here's a paragraph to add. That it could but as be, long as, it, yeah, as long as we're all dropping the comment bubbles into only to the same document, not to three separate documents. Yeah, I, I would just like to add, I, I like what both Liz and Kathy are saying that I think one person should have control and the rest of us can see what it is. Right. right. Okay, so I noticed there's nobody here beside the five of us. So I do believe there's no public comment, but I'm acknowledging that I 
asked for it <laughs> or we're noting that we're not having it because there's nobody participating but and there are no topics that I the chair didn't anticipate anything else to say before we adjourn no we're we're adjourning kind of on time since we yeah. started a few minutes late that's great it's not bad and we didn't get cut off that was that was really unfortunate but oh well we succeeded well, thank you, everyone. And if, if and I don't think I said it to everyone, but Happy New Year. We are still. Happy New Year. Even though it's feeling old already, to be honest. <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh, my God. 13 days. What? How much stuff could happen? Hmm. Well, right. So do, you, do we need to vote on adjourning? I forget. No, we can just say meetings adjourned. adjourned. Okay, good. Meetings adjourned. Thank, thank you all. Very Night, much. everyone. Bye. Bye.